Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless psalm 2 1 through 12 why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the lord and against his anointed saying let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us he who sits in the heavens shall laugh the lord shall hold them in derision then he shall speak to them in his wrath, and distress them in his deep displeasure. Yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance, and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore, be wise, O kings. Be instructed you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the sun, lest he be angry, and you perish in the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are all those who put their trust in him. The most powerful people in the world are meeting in Davos, Switzerland this week for what they call the World Economic Forum. Let's check in to see how today went, shall we? Now I have China, 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 I have That's Chief Putani Yawanawa. She's from the Amazon rainforest, and she performed the ceremony so we could hear the voice of the forest. John Kerry is spending the week at the World Economic Forum. You know, it's the Super Bowl for people with a solar fetish. Kerry's Biden's climate czar, and he convinced Joe to plow billions into electric cars, but EVs and cold weather don't mix. The battery has been dying constantly, and for the past, I would say, four days, we've charged it like seven times. Come on. The past few days, the, the, the weather has been in the negative, negative 10, negative 12, negative, just all negative. I can't even charge my vehicle, y'all. And then you got all these cars right here waiting. And these Tesla, these charges is broke. And Carrie says, don't believe any of that. EVs run smooth. That's disinformation. There has been a very, very clear policy, which regrettably has been attacked by people who are engaged in high levels of disinformation. They've been trying to scare people about the range of vehicles. So there's range anxiety out there. Range anxiety. People are getting anxiety because their cars are running out of juice when it's below zero not because of disinformation. It's merely an observation. Michael Schellenberger is a Substack columnist. Michael, before we get into the EVs, um, were you blessed by the Amazonian tribal chief when she performed that ritual ceremony? <laughs> yeah, I felt it. I felt the forest in my heart. Absolutely, Jesse. <laughs> Did they just bring her up there so they can just say, OK, we love the indigenous Americans who live in the rainforest. Now let's go tear it all down. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I, I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that the World Economic Forum has an anti-civilization agenda. I mean, that's what if you make an energy expensive. It's the you know, it's the most essential resource of a society. It's got to be cheap. And but you see it all across the board. And they want to make food expensive, energy expensive, the cost of living expensive. These are global elites that are seeking to keep ordinary people down. And 
makes sense that they would embrace an anti-civilization narrative like that. The meeting of the minds goes back to the ancient Greeks, when philosophers like Aristotle and Socrates used to gather in what they called agoras, a space where philosophy and business and politics were discussed amongst some of Athens' best and brightest. These meetings generated a cauldron of ideas on how to organize society and achieve happiness. But today, when the so-called brightest minds get together, it's nothing but a debaucherous, insane asylum. This week, thousands of the world's most elite executives and politicians jetted off to Davos, Switzerland for the World Economic Forum. Now, at the party, sociopaths indulge in the highest quality caviar, endless champagne, you can almost smell the magic of the place when you're there, is how one well-connected regular describes the week. But of course, the magic isn't for everyone. It's an invite-only event. So you have to be somebody just to get through the door. And if you're in, guests are slapped with wristbands and divided by class. White with shiny blue means you're a VIP. Plain white, married to a VIP. Green, you're a VIP's escort. At Davos, Everyone feels special, but before they get to business, they have to break the DEI ice. My spirit name is Ozawa Makwa, which means brown bear in Ojibwe. My father is Algonquin, Métis, and Irish. My mother is African Jamaican and indigenous Jamaican. So I get to bring these intersections and these lenses to my work. And coming as a white man uh, of advanced age from a continental European background. Inclusion is about see me, and hear me and make space for me. And so we should all be doing this because you can make a profit. Inclusion is profitable. Oh, so once they get through the spirit names and the white shaming, Davos gets to the heart of the issue. So of course they bring in the guy who invented the internet. The fossil fuel polluters use a portion of their wealth from digging up dead things uh, from the earth and burning them in ways that destroy the future of humanity. They use some of their wealth uh, to confuse people. I get a little exercised about this uh, because I've watched it for a long time and it's driven by pure greed, pure greed. If we deploy uh, electric vehicles, solar, wind, batteries, green hydrogen and the rest and we get to true net zero, temperatures on the earth will stop going up almost immediately. Romans 1 18 through 25. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness and the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator, who was blessed forever. Amen. Romans chapter 1 is a description of ungodly, unrighteous, foolish men and their attempt to rationalize away evidence of the true God. It perfectly describes the writings of Charles Darwin and the evolution lie. The climate change cultists have exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worship and serve the creature rather than the creator. These foolish men deify Mother Earth for the sake of ecological purity. Climate change is being used to destroy national sovereignty and autonomy in order to bring in a one world government headed by the Antichrist. Gore is worth 200 million bucks and his greed is infinite because he's making money to save the world. The men who make money building the world, they're greedy. They should go bankrupt and be arrested for climate crimes. How'd Gore get to Davos, by the way? He didn't bicycle. And remember last year he said we'd die from rain bombs? Still waiting on the rain bombs. And once the mascot's finished, it's time to plan the future. N not their futures, your future. That order seems to know, know, uh, not be uh, the order anymore. We are on the way to a new order, so we are between orders. The New World Order 
is a group of elitist people bent on ruling the world through a single worldwide system of government. The appeal of this new world order lies in its proposal to free the world of wars and political strife and its promise to eradicate poverty, disease, and hunger. Its purpose is to meet the needs and hopes of all mankind through worldwide peace. This new world order will supposedly do away with the need for diverse world governments. This will be accomplished by the installation of a one world political system. The new world order will emphasize tolerance through the promotion and acceptance of other cultures and their values and ideologies. Its ultimate goal is a sense of unity and oneness with all people. Other objectives include the use of a single worldwide currency, as well as oneness in politics, religion, and moral values. The new world order will promise worldwide peace, the absence of war, and the elimination of all political unrest. The problem with the acceptance and approval of any new world order is that no government has ever offered, nor will it ever offer, real hope and peace for mankind. Those who desire the ushering in of a new world order are in for a rude awakening. Only heaven brings lasting peace and happiness. The Bible makes it very clear that all things associated with his life on earth, with his sufferings, its decay, its discontent, and death, will continue with this physical life as we read in 2 Corinthians 4.16. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Although our physical bodies are growing older and we notice that our outer man is progressively decaying and wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day after day. The new life we received at salvation is being transformed into the image and likeness of Christ as we mature in the faith, grow in grace, and gain a more intimate knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The one hope for all believers lies only in heaven, as we read in John 14, 1-4. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. It is the hope of heaven we need, not the false hope of a new world order as the world is not our home, as we read in Philippians 3.20. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. A new world order. So what will that look like? But the point is you have nothing to be worried about. Well, unless you like to eat. In most of Asia, rice is still grown with traditional methods, which requires flooding the fields. And when you flood the fields, you, you basically kill the weeds with water, um, which sounds good, except it takes huge amounts of water. They basically decompose underwater, and when they do that, they release methane. And so actually rice production is one of the largest producers of methane, which is, you know, many times more, more toxic in terms of greenhouse gas emissions. Rice is like the top crop in the world. What are they going to replace it with? Lab rice. Yum. Now, so what are the farmers and the fishermen going to do? Well, they don't need jobs because they'll be arrested. We have a kind of cultural, very ingrained habit of not taking damage to nature as seriously as we take damage to people and property. You know, if you're campaigning for human rights, at least you know mass murder, torture, all of these things are serious crimes. But there's no equivalent in the environmental space. With Ecocide, what we see is actually what people are trying to do, what businesses are trying to do, is make money, is, you know, is farm, is fish, is do all of these things that are um, you know, producing energy and so on. It, what's missing is the awareness and the conscience around the side effects, around the collateral damage. Imagine you're taking your son fishing this weekend, got your lines in the water. Next thing you know, you're in handcuffs for Ecocide. Those fish have constitutional rights. And if that doesn't work, we're still not at net zero. 
you get slapped with a carbon footprint tax. I would say digital and sustainable need to go hand in hand. And what do I mean? Yeah? There are initiatives like we are driving as industries, Catena X, where we are trying to measure the footprint throughout the value chain. And what would that give us? Yeah? I would have a bottle like this and I could tell you from the iron ore to the logistics to the glass, what is the carbon footprint of this bottle? And then I could price it. And I could tell you now you are doing good because you now pay 20 cents more, but you are very conscious that you have a green product, yeah? No, James Bond villain, no. So forget about cheap gas, rice, and protein. You're not entitled to that. You're also not entitled to an opinion. Disinformation is a security threat. And uh, maybe not many noticed, but it was part of the Russian military doctrine that they will start information war, and we are in it now. And this information is a very powerful tool. We are focusing on uh, uh, improving of the system where the people will get the facts right. We don't speak about opinions. We are not correcting anyone's opinions or language. Yeah, this is about the facts. Oh, the old CIA Jedi mind trick. Label everything that gets in your way, like Trump or the truth, as Russia disinformation, which is a national security threat, and so therefore must be destroyed by the all-encompassing power of the national security state. Question the election or the effectiveness of electric cars? Now you're a national security threat. And you're on the list like the parents who raise their voices at school board meetings. So you know what just would make everything much easier? If we just stop resisting and submit to mind control. Bringing the kinds of sensors that people have become accustomed to, such as rings and in watches, into everyday devices, but it breaches the final frontier of privacy, that is, what people are thinking and feeling. Initially, what they will be capable of doing is very high-level brain state reading. Things like, are you tired? Are you paying attention? Is your mind wandering? Are you happy or sad? Um, they maybe enable interaction like up, down, left, right. So slap some sensors on your forehead and let Davos read your thoughts. And if we're angry at Davos, up, down, left, right, now we're mellow. Don't you see? These are well-intentioned people. The people that brought us the first pandemic are now hard at work preparing for the second. There are things that are unknown that may happen. And anything happening is a matter of when, not if. And that was when we gave the name Disease X. Um, so Disease X is a placeholder for uh, unknown um, disease. You, you may even call COVID as the first disease X. And it may happen again. The guy who covered up the Chinese lab leak is getting his ducks in a row for the next Chinese lab leak. We're in good hands. How do I know? Because John Kerry said so. I am convinced beyond any doubt that because of the decisions being made in the marketplace now, because, I mean, you know as well as I do, even if, uh, you know, I don't want this, obviously, but if you wound up with a different president who was opposed to climate crisis, I got news for you. No one politician anywhere in the world can undo what is happening now. It's the biggest transformation in the economies of the world in all of human history. Did John Kerry just say saving the world is a business opportunity? So if Kerry's wrong and the world doesn't need saving, is it still a business opportunity? But if you say Kerry might be wrong, that's disinformation because it threatens his business opportunity, don't you see? So you either shut your mouth, don't ask any questions, or the FBI is going to have a word. Why would we even doubt Kerry, even if he got his facts wrong? Kerry's a man with a facelift who married a ketchup heiress. He's got it figured out. He must know how to improve our lives. He improved his. Now, nah. Kerry's improving his life at the expense of yours. This is about extracting humanity from the human race. This is about wrestling control of the land, sea, and air away from you so they can make you dependent on their food grown in their labs, put you in their cars, make you take their drugs, submit to their machines. They're putting the human spirit out of business. And they're right. It's a great business opportunity. 
It's vulture capitalism. They're preying on our bodies and won't be satisfied until they've picked our carcass clean. We were told the New World Order was just a conspiracy theory. Mind control, disinformation police, food and viruses from a lab. In order to open an account, you need to have an ID. Right. And um, I have to say that when, we, when I started this job, there were actually very little countries in Africa or Latin America that had one ubiquitous type of ID, and certainly that it was digital, and certainly that it was biometric. And uh, we've really worked with all our partners to actually help that being, uh, um, I mean, to grow this. And the interesting part of it is that, you know, yes, it is very necessary for financial services, but not only, so, you know, it's also good for school enrollment, it's also good for health, who will actually go to vaccination or not. Uh, it's, it's very good to actually to get your subsidies, you know, from the government. So this has not only effect to the financial services, it's a very important issue. Events are happening faster than we can process them, yet nothing startles or amazes us much anymore. In the time of the end, the book of Daniel prophesied that knowledge would increase. Daniel 12.4 but you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. Knowledge had to increase for future prophecy to be fulfilled. The biblical knowledge we have today is because of the increase in technology. There are many prophecies in Daniel's time that could not come to fulfillment because the technology had not yet been invented. That is why Daniel was told to shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. In our time, the time of the end, we are witnessing the technology that will bring about the end of days, climaxing in the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. One of those prophecies is found in Revelation 13, 16 through 18. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. Knowledge is increasing rapidly in accordance with Daniel's prophecy. And we are seeing an unsaved world rushing headlong into accepting the mark of the beast and they don't even know it. Whether the mark of the beast is an RFID chip, electronic tattoo, or some other device, Christians must be discerning. The Antichrist in the near future will use this technology for his evil purposes of tracking people and controlling their financial transactions all under the guise of worshiping him. The Bible gives us the most dire warning to those who take the mark of the beast and worship his image in Revelation 14, 9 through 11. Then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast in his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb, and the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night, who worship the beast and his image, and whoever receives the mark of his name. The first of God's bold judgments is aimed specifically at those who take the mark of the beast and worship his image as we read in Revelation 16, 1 and 2. Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, Go and pour out the bowls of the wrath of God on the earth. So the first went and poured out his bowl upon the earth. And a foul and loathsome sore came upon the men who had the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. 1 John 2.18 Little children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is, Believe in the Lord Jesus 
and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in Him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.